All right, we're playing Crime in the Ten Commandments. As I said, we have not shared these news stories with each other prior to the show, so this will be the, the first time that we'll, we'll be hearing these, uh, these stories from each other and reacting to them. So what's, uh, what have you got for us? Well, the one that I have is actually not from recent events. It's actually a, an old story, but for some reason this story came to mind and I decided that this is what I was going to use because it's uh, a local story from my neck of the woods. And this goes back to uh, December 23rd and 24th of 2006. There was an article that appeared in the Star Tribune of Minneapolis paper, mm-hmm. and uh, Amboy, Minnesota, which is um, a town just eight miles from here. A shocked silence hung over the southern Minnesota town on Christmas Eve as residents wrestled with news of a shootout that left an Amboy man dead and a Mankato police officer seriously wounded. Jeffrey Scarevold, 41, shot himself to death early Sunday morning after police tear gassed his home about a mile west of Amboy, authorities said at a brief Sunday news conference. Scarevold's apparent suicide came after a seven-hour standoff that began as a domestic dispute between him and his wife and ended with more than 50 state and local police officers on the scene. Earlier, officers said, Scarevold shot two police officers in the head, one of whom was probably saved by his helmet. As Scarevold held off police, he took phone calls from friends and family and spoke to reporter for the Mankato Free Press. In that newspaper's report, Scarevold claimed in a phone conversation that a Blue Earth County Sheriff's deputy entered his house about 4 p.m. Saturday while he was arguing with his wife, Cindy. Scarevold reached for a rifle, not realizing that the stranger in his home was a deputy. A struggle ensued and police used a taser shocking device on him. Scarevold and the deputies exchanged gunfire according to his version of the story, and Scarevold was shot in the stomach before the deputies retreated. Scarevold's wife escaped the house unharmed, At the news conference Sunday, police gave a different account, according to Peterson of the Department of Public Safety. Two Blue Earth Sheriff's deputies initially approached Scarevold's house and realized he was armed. They retreated without engaging him, Peterson said, and called for backup from a regional tactical response team composed of members from several area police agencies. Peterson confirmed that tactical response officers did use a taser on Scarevold to try and bring a peaceful resolution to the incident. That didn't work, Peterson said. When the response team went in, Peterson said Scarevold opened fire, shooting Nelson and Sadusky. The response team retreated and brought in a larger backup team, including members of the State Bureau of Criminal Apprehension and the Minnesota State Patrol. Police negotiators spent hours trying to get Scarevold to surrender. Finally, early Sunday morning, which was Christmas Eve, they shot tear gas into his house. Moments later, Peterson said the police heard a single gunshot. They entered the house and found Scarevold dead. Peterson declined to release further details, saying the case is under investigation. Few residents of Amboy would talk about the incident Sunday, with some saying they didn't want to discuss it until after Christmas. One resident who did talk was Bruce Keetzer, who happened to be one of my church members, uh, who worked with Scarevold on a hog farm about two years ago. Scarevold's job was washing out hog crates with a high-pressure sprayer. Keetzer said he was a fun guy at work who liked to joke around. I just don't know what to think of this, Keetzer said. It's something we never expect to happen here. And they never do. (laughs) No, no. And the reason, and I don't know why I was thinking of this, but um, I had the uh, task of burying that individual. Oh, wow. Um, Yeah, he wasn't, I was serving a vacancy at, at another church at the time. His wife had been confirmed in that church, but hadn't gone since she had been confirmed. Hmm. And since that was the closest relation they had with any church, I was asked to do the burial. Lucky me. Wow, that must have been fun. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Was the, uh, was, the, uh, was the funeral sermon that day about the fourth, the fifth, and sixth commandments? <laughs> <laughs> well, there, there actually wasn't a funeral. Oh, um, there was uh, a visitation. He was cremated, and then I was uh, I, I presided at a graveside service. Gotcha. Yeah, that was yeah jacked up situation all around. And I know some of the details that were never released to the media because I spoke with some officers who were there on the scene when all this took place. And a member of your church knew the guy, so that's interesting. yes, yes. Wow. So you got to, we've got the. I'm guessing we've got the sixth commandment. Uh, because of the domestic dispute with the wife. Right. Yep. Yep. Um, 
And just as, as a reminder for, you know, the Sixth Commandment isn't just about adultery. Um, you know, again, the explanation that Luther provides tells us what we ought to be doing, and it says husband and wife love and honor each other, which... Um, right. And the way the story goes, uh, this... I don't recall if this was released in any other news reports, but um, him and his wife got in this argument. He went out with his gun and shot out the tires on his wife's vehicle so she couldn't leave. And uh, a friend ended up coming and picking her up before police arrived. So, I mean, this this was somebody who... Uh, certainly wasn't in his right i mean no matter how upset i was at my wife i can't imagine going out and, and shooting out the tires on her vehicle so she couldn't leave especially since yeah. tires aren't cheap <laughs> <laughs> right so we got property damage on top of this <laughs> which so there's a seventh commandment issue there's a seventh commandment issue which is and again uh seventh commandment thou shalt not steal um, but there's, as we've, as we've been talking about, there's also the implicit, you know, you should, um, you know, help your neighbor, uh, protect their property. And we'll talk about that. We got a story coming up here in a minute that, that talks a little more about that as well. Um, we've got a, obviously fourth, I'm thinking fourth commandment issue with his resisting of, of the police and his shooting at police officers. Yes. Um, not submitting to the to to the um, authorities. Um, clear fifth commandment. Clearly, issue here. clearly fifth commandment in the shooting of the officers and his own suicide. Right. You know, and this is. I'm going to go out on a little bit of a limb here too, um, and I'm just saying this based on the eyewitness reports of at, at least one officer that I had spoken with, and I'm not going to, of course, mention any names here, but uh, um, there. There could be an Eighth Commandment issue here, okay. as well as a Fifth Commandment issue on the side of law enforcement. Oh, okay. And, and, and now first, I'm going to preface this by saying I am very supportive of our police officers. You know, they have a tough job to do. And yeah, there's, there's you know, uh, there, there's bad apples in every profession in the world. Yep. Whether it's police officers or if it's, you know, pastors. Um, but, uh, and this is one of the things, and I think this is a, a simply a symptom of the overly litigious society that we live in, that it would be great if law enforcement would be more transparent, but so often they don't give the whole story because they don't want to expose themselves to any liability. Um, so one thing that did happen in this case was uh, at one point he was coming out of the house with his hands up to surrender himself. Mm. Um, it did mention in, the, in all the news stories, it did mention that he was tased. He was tased while he was coming out of the house with his hands up. Oh, uh, Okay. And the reason why it was ineffective is because he was wearing a heavy coat and the barbs of the taser did not penetrate his clothing. Gotcha. So you can say that there was, there's an Eighth Commandment issue there because there was, they're not telling the whole story. Um, right. And, and then you can throw out the Fifth Commandment that, well, if he's surrendering, why'd you tase him? Right. Um, because that right there could have been the end of it. Uh, but, you know, it just... The situation went from bad to craptastic at that point. Yep. Um, the uh, just the high point of this is that the uh, and of course the officers that were shot mm -hmm. were shot with an AR-15. Ooh. And they both survived headshots. That's that's um, a, wow. <laughs> the the one his uh, his ballistic helmet deflected the round. The other. It, it penetrated, but uh, I think that officer lost his eye, if I recall correctly. Mm. Um, but he did survive. Um, so, and there's a couple of other kind of tangential issues here as well, based on on what you were telling me about this couple. Uh, you've also possibly got a third commandment issue. You're talking about the wife who was confirmed but was not churched after that point. Um, right. And so that kind of all leads back to well, if they're not in church then there's potentially that first commandment issue as well. Right. And you know, here's something that's interesting too. Um, and this, this bleeds over back into the sixth commandment. And, uh, and this is where I would encourage all of our listeners that be faithful in worship with your spouse, that uh, the divorce rate for uh, 
those who attend church regularly and have an active faith life is roughly 10%. Wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. There was a study that was done. I, I don't recall the, the exact specifics of the study, but that is the one thing I do remember, that for couples that were active in their faith, t- worshiping together and so forth, um, that, uh, yeah, roughly 10%. Gotcha. So if you want to safeguard your marriage, get your butt to church. Exactly. Well, and and let's address real quick for those who who've heard this. I'm sure we all have at some point. The people who say they don't need to go to church, um, they are um, they don't need to be in church to to worship God. Why do we? Why are we commanded to go to church? And where does that uh, come from in in Scripture? Well, we have the third commandment. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Right. Um, St. Paul writes to not forsake the gathering together of one another on the Lord's day. Mm -hmm. Um, And the reason for all of this isn't because, you know, God is some narcissist and he uh, feels better about himself when we all go to church and worship. It's for our own darn good. You know, it's it's for our spiritual well-being. It's so our souls will be fed so we receive the means of grace. So it's not what we give to God when we're in church. It's what God is providing to us. It's the gifts that we receive, um, his word, his sacrament, uh, absolution when we're in church. Exactly. Exactly. If you enjoyed this clip of Armed Lutheran Radio, be sure to subscribe to this channel. Also, check out our podcast, Armed Lutheran Radio, if you enjoy these kinds of discussions about the moral and ethical issues surrounding gun rights and gun ownership. If you would like to support our mission uh, and hear more, keep us doing what we do, then uh, be sure to check out the Reformation Gun Club. We are listener supported, and that means that we don't have advertising. We don't have any sponsors. We rely on our listeners to keep us going. So you can check out all of that and get access to lots of exclusive content for as little as a dollar a month. Look for a link in the show notes for our website and for the Reformation Gun Club as well, plus any other helpful links uh, related to today's topic. Thank you all for watching. Christ's blessings to you, and I'll talk to you next time.